Welcome to Electro Online. In this video, we're going to begin with the right. Welcome to Electro Online. In this video, we're going to start <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Welcome to Electro Online. In this video, we're going to begin with the more difficult concept of ray tracing through thick lenses. It's a little bit more complicated than ray tracing through thin lenses. Well, here we have a thick lens. Notice it has a front boundary. We label that boundary number one. And a back boundary, we label that boundary number two. When we trace rays through a thick lens, we need to be concerned about transitioning across the front boundary, the transition through the lens, and then transition across the second boundary. There's three areas of interest here, and we need to find equations to describe the ray as it goes across the first boundary, as it traces through the, the lens, and as it goes across the second boundary. And we're going to come up with those three equations. In this video, we're going to start with the first equation, how you trace a ray across the first boundary. Now notice that we use one and two for the front side of the lens and for the back side of the lens. Also notice we use I for incident and T for transmitted. So across a boundary, we have the ray incident to the boundary and the ray transmitted on the other side of the boundary. Of course, with glass and air interface, we have a refraction, a bending of the light, and of course we need to follow that as well. Also notice we've drawn a horizontal line in purple and a blue line which is perpendicular to the surface or normal to the surface at that point the point of incidence. We're also going to be using Snell's law, where we say that the index of refraction on the incident side times the sine of theta. This theta here on the incident side is relative to the normal. So this is the ray right here, and here's the line that's normal. So we use the angle theta. That must equal the index of refraction on the other side of the boundary, the transmitted side, times the sine of theta, which is this angle right here. Now notice that theta on the front side is subdivided into alpha 1 and alpha i sub 1 and on the other side theta t1 which is on the transmitted side is also the sum of alpha 1 plus alpha t1 so here we have alpha i1 and alpha t1 and those are the two angles we're trying to follow we're trying to find the direction of the ray and that's defined by the angle relative to the horizontal line the line which is parallel to the optical axis Another approximation we're going to use here, which is called the small angle approximation for small angles. We can say that the sine of theta is approximately equal to theta. We're going to make that substitution over here, so we can write that the index of refraction on the incident side of boundary 1 times theta I1. So instead of writing sine of theta, we're going to write theta, and that equals the index of refraction on the transmitted side, T1, times theta, T1, the angle on the transmitted side. But then we realize that these two angles are simply the sum of those two angles, so we can then say that N I1 times alpha 1 plus alpha I1 must equal N T1 times alpha 1 plus alpha t1. So you can see that that's indeed the case. And then we see that we have a triangle here. We have y1. We have the radius of curvature of the front side of the lens. And we have alpha 1 here. Notice that this alpha 1 must equal this alpha 1 because they're alternate interior angles, which means that the sine of alpha 1, oops, should alpha sub 1, is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse, and in this case, the opposite side is the height y1, and the hypotenuse is r1. And of course, since we're dealing with small angles, that this is approximately equal to alpha 1, and therefore we can replace alpha 1 by this particular ratio in here. So we have n i1 times alpha 1, which is y1 over r1, plus alpha i1, 
equals nt1 on the transmitted side times, again, the same ratio, y1 over r1 plus alpha t1. Now you may say, why is he doing that and where are we going with this? What are we trying to accomplish? Well, it turns out that the information that we need as we trade races through thick lenses or th thick lens systems, we need to keep track of the incident angle, alpha i1, and the transmitted angle, alpha t1. This is relative to the horizontal. We also need to keep track of the height here, but we're going to worry about that later. And we need to keep track of the index of refractions. So what we want to do is we want to write the index of refraction on the transmitted side in the angle relative to the horizontal on the transmitted side in terms of everything else that we know. The information as the ray enters the lens, that should be a known quantity. So we need to write these two quantities in terms of the others. So looking over here, what I can do first is probably multiply everything out. See what we get. So we have n i1 y1 over r1 plus n i1 alpha i1 equals n t1 y1 over r1 plus n t1 alpha t1. And notice nt1, alpha t1 is what we want to write in terms of everything else. So therefore, we're going to write this on one side of the equation, everything else on the other side of the equation. So we're going to turn the equation around and write this first. nt1, alpha t1 is equal to. Well, we have this on the other side. So we have the index of refraction on the incident side and the angle relative to the horizontal on the incident side. Then we have this quantity right here, and we have this quantity right here, but notice they both have a y1 over r1, which I can factor out. So we can say plus y1 over r1 times, on this side I have a positive n i1 minus, when we bring this over it becomes negative, n t1. We're going to write one more change. What we're going to do now is we're going to write this inside the parentheses, this on the outside. We're going to make this a minus and switch those two around. So now we have something in the standard form. N T1 alpha T1 is equal to N I1 alpha I1 minus. So we have this reversed then, the quantity N t1 minus ni1 over r1 multiplied times y1. And this equation here is called the refracting equation. Which means it describes the refraction of the ray across the first boundary. t means transmitted, i means incident, and here would be the difference of the index of refraction of the transmitted side compared to the incident side. R1 is the radius of curvature of the front side of the lens. Y1 is the height above the optical axis where the entry point is of the ray. Now the quantity inside the parentheses here can be defined as D1. D1 is equal to NT1 minus NI1 divided by R1. This quantity right here is known as the power of the lens. And so that would be the power. And that, of course, would be different on both sides of the lenses if we have different index of refractions on the back side compared to the front side, and would be different if we had different radii of curvatures. So that represents the power of the lens. And therefore, this equation can be written as n t1 alpha t1 equals alpha i1 minus d1 times y1. And so that would be the more compact version of the refracting equation. But that's what we need to know for a ray entering a thick lens. We need to know the incident angle relative to the horizontal and the index of refraction. We need to know where it enters the lens. Then on the other side, we can then calculate the index of refraction of the lens itself, or that's usually given, and when we calculate 
the angle relative to the horizontal of the transmitted ray across the boundary. So that's the first part of tracing a ray through a thick lens. It's called the refracting equation that describes what happens as we cross the first boundary. And that's how it's done.